Welcome to IIT Bombay, one of India's premier academic institutions. IIT has several state of the art laboratories and safety is a priority for us. So we have made a series of videos highlighting how to be safe. This video is about fire safety. A laboratory has many potential sources which can cause a fire. A fire can disrupt research activities cause property damage and can endanger lives. In this video, we will discuss about the elements of fire, classification of fires, causes and prevention of fires, types and usage of fire extinguishers, action to be taken in case of fire. For a fire to start, the following elements are essential fuel, oxygen, heat. These elements in the right quantities starts a chemical reaction that sustains the fire. Let us see how these elements start a fire. A flammable solvent beaker was stored near a hot plate. It was knocked over the hot plate. The hot surface ignited the solvent. We will now see some common fuels present in laboratories. Fires caused by wood, paper, plastics and rubber are classified as Class A fires. Flammable liquids are commonly used in research laboratories. These are classified as Class B fires. Fires caused by flammable gases like hydrogen, methane, etc. come under Class C fires. Metallic fires are classified as Class D fires. Examples are sodium and potassium. We will now discuss about the sources of ignition. Open flames can easily ignite flammable vapors and other combustibles. Hot surfaces can be a potential ignition source in a laboratory. You will be handling flammables and oxidizers in the laboratory. If they mix during handling or storage, it can cause a fire or explosion. Poor electrical connections and overloading of circuits can result in a fire caused by overheating. Damaged electrical wires can cause a short circuit and start a fire. Electrical wires in contact with sharp edges and hot surfaces cause insulation damage and fire. Electric bulbs with high temperature can ignite combustible materials nearby. We can prevent fires by ensuring that the elements of fire don't come together. Do not use fume hoods for storing flammable chemicals. Keep fume hoods clean. Keep flammable chemicals away from sources of ignition. Improper storage and handling of flammable solvents can cause a spill and a fire. Use safety cans and cabinets for storing flammable chemicals. Segregate chemicals on the basis of compatibility to prevent mixing of incompatible chemicals. Electrical equipment switched on overnight can become a source of fire if a fault develops. Switch off equipment after use. Protect electrical cables from damage. Make sure you keep combustible materials away from electric light fittings. Ensure routine maintenance of electrical appliances. Maintain good housekeeping in your laboratory. Remove unwanted combustible materials. Now, we will discuss about the types of fire extinguishers. Water type extinguishers are used to fight Class A fires. Water removes the heat from the fuel and extinguishes the fire. Foam type extinguishers can be used to fight both Class A and Class B fires. Foam, when applied on the fuel surface, cuts off oxygen and also prevents vapor formation. 
dry chemical powder extinguishers are used to curb Class B and Class C fires. The powder coats the fuel surface and inhibits the chemical reaction, thereby extinguishing the fire. There are also chemical powders which can be used for Class A, B and C fires. You will find the letters A, B and C written on the extinguisher. Carbon dioxide extinguishers are used for Class B and Class C fires. The advantage of this extinguisher is that it does not leave any residue. Hence, they can be used on electronic and electrical equipment. They extinguish fire by displacing oxygen which is required for combustion. When fighting fire, do not use water type or foam extinguishers on live electrical equipments as this can cause electrocution. Metallic fires can be very tricky to handle. Use special dry powders or dry sand to curb them. We will now see how to operate a fire extinguisher. Make sure you use the right extinguisher. Remove the locking pin. Aim the nozzle at the base of the fire and squeeze the lever. Sweep the nozzle moving ahead. If the extinguisher is of a knob type, you have to remove the locking pin and press the knob down for activation. For operating a carbon dioxide extinguisher, remove the locking pin. Open the valve fully in the anti-clockwise direction. Aim the discharge horn at the base of the flame. Use of fire extinguishers is voluntary and use them only if you have attended a practical training session. We will now discuss about the action to be taken in case of fire. The first thing you need to do in case of a fire is to alert everyone nearby. Then actuate the fire alarm. Also make sure you inform the security office. The contact numbers of the quick response team must be displayed in the laboratory. Save the numbers in your mobile phone. If you hear the fire alarm or if you are given instructions, evacuate the building and assemble at the designated assembly point. Do not re-enter the building until you are asked to do so. Fight a fire only if it is localized and small. Evacuate the area if the fire has spread or if you find that the room is filled with smoke. While fighting a fire, make sure that there is an exit behind you so that you can escape if the fire spreads fast. While you evacuate the room, close the door behind you. This confines the spread of fire and smoke. Make sure that you do not lock it. Do not use the lift during a fire as it can fail and trap you midway. Smoke can also spread into the lift. Use the stairways while evacuating the building. Ensure that switchboards are labeled. High-rise buildings have refuge areas. If you have difficulty in exiting the building during a fire, wait in the refuge area. In case of fire, smoke can quickly fill the stairway. Smoke contains toxic gases and it will obscure vision, preventing escape of occupants. Make sure the fire doors are always kept closed. Never lock or obstruct emergency exits. Keep passages and stairways clear of obstructions. Do not park your vehicle obstructing fire hydrants and roads around the building. This can hinder the movement of fire appliances and delay fire fighting. Let us now summarize before we conclude. 
we discussed about sources of ignition, emphasis must always be on prevention of fires. Prompt use of the right type of fire extinguisher can limit damage and save lives. Be aware of emergency procedures and be prepared for dealing with emergencies. Thank you for watching and stay safe.